Okay, this video is going to show you how to install a PID controller for this digital master built electric smoker. The problem I was having was the internal temperature probe in here. It was reading way too high, causing this thing to turn off the element prematurely. So when I had a six pound pork butt in there, it literally wouldn't go any higher than 225 degrees because that thing kept shutting off the element to heat it up. So um, after doing lots of research, I see that that's a common problem and Master Build hasn't done anything to rectify it. So we're going to build our own. Um, I'll put some parts lists together for you down in the comments. It was actually pretty cheap and uh, I'll install it and wire it. And if you want to do it yourself, you can. So the first thing we did <clears throat> was find the element which is back here behind this cover at the bottom. Uh, six screws and you're going to have a, a red, black, and a yellow, green wire. So this is uh, one side of the element, another side, and this is ground. It's uh, screwed right here to that. So we're going to, when these were plugged in, there was this piece of heat shrink that went kind of around everything. I just took my razor, sliced off the heat shrink, and these pulled up. So we're no longer going to use these. We're just going to kind of tuck them in there somewhere. And uh, we're going to put the new controller on here. And we're going to run it up. And I made a box. And we'll get into that in a minute. I want to show you the back. And then we're going to cut out a hole in this plate for the wire to come out and run up to the top. So let me go get to the controller and show you what it looks like. Okay, so we got the project box that it's all going to go inside of. Um, I guess it could be a little bit smaller. Solid state relay. It's rated for 40 amps, uh, which is overkill. And it comes with a heat sink. But the heat sink's probably going to be useless in this case since this thing only draws like 800 watts, which is somewhere around 6 or so amps, which is nothing. Uh, so here's the display, this is the Inkbird display, uh, Inkbird uh, temperature controller. I'll put some links down there below. It comes with a thermal coupler. Um, we could use this first. I like these because you can easily interchange them here just by screwing them into the back. So if I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. Um, I got, this is uh, I believe it's 14.3. No, 14.2. I don't know. It's 14 gauge. So that should be fine. That's going to go from the element to the box, which I'm going to set the box up here where the other one is at. Um, some regular uh, female disconnectors. That's going to just plug into here for the element. And then I got um, some of these guys. I'm going to run the wires through this. The big one's going to go in the box. These we got a power cable, and we got this cable going through it. And I got a smaller one here that we're going to put on that plate so the wires can come out. And uh, a switch. You don't need the switch. Um, you can just plug it in, and it'll all turn on. But, you know, what if you want to leave it plugged in? Then you can just turn everything off right here with the switch. So it's pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to do a kind of a detailed build on how to wire all this stuff and also program that. So this will probably be kind of a long video, but if you're trying to build one of these, it should help a lot. So let's, uh, let's get started building. Okay, so I got uh, the ends crimped on. I used uh, white and black for the element. And then the green is back there, and I just kind of screwed it down uh, to where this one was at, actually right behind it. And the stock wires are just kind of pushed back in there. <coughs> and I drilled a hole through my metal piece using one of these things. So when you do that, be careful, guys, because you know that's going to spin around in your hand. So make sure you stick it in a vise or something safe. And that's just going to go right back up on there. 
and screw that in, tighten these down. And then this ugh, other end is going to go to the box, which is going to go up there. So I can cut off whatever I want to, if it's too long or whatever. This was a string, I think it started out with six, six feet. So let me screw all this back together and then we'll move on to the uh, box itself. Okay, before I get too far ahead of myself for you guys, I want to show you the progress. Um, so I just cut the, the uh, power whip off of the back of the unit because I'm never going to put this back to stock. But if you plan on doing it or you feel uncomfortable cutting that off for some reason, you can just tape it up here and get it out of the way. Um, and then you can put it back to stock if you wanted to. So my box, I cut out the square for the controller, that little circle is for my on-off switch. I installed the relay. The bottom of the relay had a metal plate which attaches to this aluminum heatsink and I just put some uh, thermal paste in between the two just for fun. Probably didn't need to do that because this thing's probably not going to get hot at all. <laughs> um, and then I took the whole assembly and I just put double sided tape on both the ends there stuck it down in the box. So we just want that just so it doesn't clunk around since there's going to be some pretty hefty wires on there. Next I'm going to run uh, the element wire and the power wire I just cut off through this little hole and they're going to kind of branch off and go their own different ways and I'm going to steal power from that to power the controller It's going to go in here. Um, I'm going to wire the controller outside the box and then when I'm done I'm just going to shove the controller into the hole uh, because it's going to be much easier to do that since this, the plugs of the controller are on the back and screwing it all in like this would be kind of a pain in the butt. So we're going to wire it outside that box, run the wires outside of this square, wire it up out here and then just shove it in and then it comes with a little kind of locking bezel. You slide from the from behind it and it'll lock it in to that hole. So let's get some wires ran. I gotta go look for some smaller gauge wires to do uh, like uh, the power on off for the PID controller and uh, some other miscellaneous things. Be right back. Okay, let's see a little bit of progress here. So I got that into the box. I got the power plug into the box. This is the thermal coupler that goes into the smoker. I'm going to try it out. I'm just going to drop it through the top of this hole up here and mount it to one of the shelves with these little brackets it came with. But anyways, um, I have all the wires ran outside so I can plug it all in. This is the signal to turn the relay on and off. That's the thermal coupler. And this is the power to turn the, the controller on. We'll install that and see how it works. And one more thing I want to mention well, if you're doing this in the process. Put this on first. Pull all the wires back out of the hole. Slide on this mounting bracket for the controller. And then put these back out there. And don't worry, I'll, I'll uh, include a, a diagram of all this wiring. So it's, uh, it's actually very simple. So just stay tuned for that. Okay, well here it is, uh, relays installed, controllers installed, and then uh, switches installed, thermal couplers here, on off switch there. So now I gotta go learn how to program it. I'm just gonna get the parameters for uh, to use as a smoker and just quickly go through the menu and tell you what the set each value at and that'll get you to doing smoking. If there's just something else you want to learn about how this thing works then uh, I'd suggest just go to the website but this is for smokers only and uh, that's what we're gonna get. Okay so since last video I had to wait for some parts and I figured oh you know what let's kind of 
play with around with it. So I got a, uh, a current meter, does voltage, current, and uh, frequency. And uh, I added some Anderson power poles because I could use this box on my other smoker. I just chop off the cable on that, put the mating ends of these, and I can use this box for that. Because that's an analog, there's no display at all. But now it's digital. So that's cool. And uh, I'm gonna, the, the programming of this was kind of really difficult at first until you kind of started pushing buttons and figuring it out. So we'll kind of slowly go over that for the settings for this one. And um, you can kind of play along uh, when you're ready. So let me wrap all this crap up. We'll try another video. Okay, let's go through the programming. Um, I'll just make this kind of quick. I will put a link in my in the description of a video that goes through each one of these settings in detail if you want to learn more about them. But for a smoker, we're just going to show you my settings, and you can set yours like that too. Well, I guess it helps if I plug it in. Let's turn that on. And uh, that's the on light that lets me know that uh, the element's getting some power. It's at uh, 6.2 amps, which is cool. Okay, so this thing, we're just going to hold the set button. You're on your normal screen right here. The top is uh, the temperature that's in the smoker now, and the bottom is what I have the, the smoker set for. So it's going to climb. And you can see the out button right here, it means it's giving power to that relay to allow power to go to the element. And that, that lies the same thing as this light. Anyway, let's go through this. If you hold the set button for a couple of seconds, 1P. If you hit left, then it goes through the settings in the 1P. So the first one is going to be set to that. Push set. The next one is going to be set to that. That's pretty much your offset for your thermometer. Mine was about uh, one degree high, so I set it to negative one. Uh, set again. Set that to, I think it's a digital filter, I think that's what it was, but set that to zero. Okay, we're going to hit set again. It goes back to 1P. Hit set again. OP, I don't remember what that is, but left button. So control, I know you got to change that to PID by pushing the up and down button. So make sure that says PID. Uh, the next one is heat, uh, cold or heat. The next one is run. You want to put that on auto. And you press uh, set again, it goes back to that. Press set again, it goes to the next kind of set of menus. This is the alarm. Uh, so I'm going to hit the left button. Uh, mode zero means turn the alarm off. That's what I want. You can set it to whatever you want. And at this point, the rest of the settings don't even really matter if you have it set on zero. But to get past this menu, I just got to go through it. So under the mode setting, there you got uh, high alarm set by default set to 9999. Low alarm set to negative 1999. This is all default. Um, I don't know what that is, but that's 9999. And I guess that's a low, which is also four nines and then DF this this one you got to set to one set that to 1.0 make sure that's there okay and we're back to the display and we're gonna go to the next menu which is oh, I'm sorry display you want to turn that on uh, this is back to the beginning we're gonna press set again it's gonna go to PID left button so CTL is gonna be one P is going to be 1, I is going to be 540, and when you adjust these, you're just going to use the up and down arrows. For example, if this is 1,000, instead of going from 1,000 to 540, if you push the left button, this uh, decimal point will move over, and you can adjust the big numbers versus just 1. So save some time, because that's what I did, and that was kind of dumb. Okay, and then the next one is D, we're going to set that to 200. These are not set usually to these numbers, but these are the numbers you, you're looking for. 
Okay, and that goes back to PID. And then unit is going to be your Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's set to Celsius, so you got to hit the up and down arrow and set that to, set that to an F. Okay? And then uh, you push it again, it goes back to the normal. So when you change the settings in here, like to change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, as soon as you select that, you hit the set button and it'll save it. And uh, so we'll do that one more time if you're following along here. So this is just the regular work screen. Hold down the set. So 1P, and you're going to hit left. That'll bring you into that menu. These are your sensor types. We're on a sensor K, but they have all different kinds of types in there. Make sure you set the right one. Uh, the offset, mine was negative one, but it comes on zero. You just got to do the test in your smoker. And the uh, digital filtering is on zero. Back to 1P, set again, and then left. And you're change control to PID because I think it was on manual or something. Make sure it's on PID. Uh, and hit, once you s select PID using the up and down arrows, you hit set and it'll store it. Okay, set again. And make sure that's on heat. And run is on auto. I think that's that's on manual from factory. And once you set it to auto, auto, make sure you hit the set button once to save it. And then set again. We'll bring you back to the beginning of the menu. Set again. We'll bring you to the next menu, which is alarm. And again, left button. Mode zero to turn off. Mode one to turn it on if you want the alarm. And then all nines, negative one nine nine nine. All nines, all nines, and that has to be 1.0. Make sure you set that. Uh, and the display is on. Okay, and that's going to bring you back to the beginning. And we're going to set, go to the next menu, PID again, left button. Okay, so just CTLs with one, P is one, I is 540. D is 200, and back to the menu, push it again, and you're on the next menu, which is unit, which is going to be uh, Fahrenheit or centigrade, whatever you choose, make sure you hit set to save it, and set again, we'll bring you back to the menu, and then set again, back to the working screen. So that's it. Um, it was a fun project. The programming was kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, I hope this video helped a little bit. I'll try to answer any questions you have. Just post them down there. And uh, thanks for watching.